All right, on this episode, we're going to do a recap of Grudge Kings 2021. Um, the good stuff, the bad stuff, the funny stuff, um, and the demise of Carla, actually. So, you can see I've got the big girl behind me. So, we're going to talk about the her destruction over Grudge King, Kings 2021. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, I'm the one to get it, bro. I swear to God, I'll get it, bro. Hey, I ain't never give it up. Yeah, I never did for. I got this, then I got it. I will rock when I'm on it. Never rock it. Got the block when I'm toxic. Spitting logic. All right, so the prep work for Grudge Kings went pretty well. Um, so. Toyota gave me a 2021 Hilux to tow Carla down to Sydney with. Um, all the prep work and everything went fine. The truck went fine. Everything was was good. Um, it wasn't until we were actually loading her up onto the trailer, um, the oil light started flickering. Uh, I didn't think much of it. Uh, I mean, Carla's got a ton of gremlins in her, so I thought I'd just check it when I got down to Sydney. So we got down to Sydney and I pulled the oil line off the turbo. We had oil pressure, really good oil pressure. Um, I checked the sensor and the wiring and all that and that was all good. And then when I plugged it all back together and started her up, there was no more oil light. So I just put it down to a bit of bit of crap blocking the sensor. Um, anyways, fast forward to the Saturday. <laughs> We got to the track and was bringing it off and the oil light came back on, but then it went out again and all that. So I still couldn't figure out what it was. I, I knew we had oil pressure in the turbo and everything, so I wasn't overly fussed on it. Um, and, and yeah, so me, Glenn and Rod went over it. We did, you know, our usual checks of all the oils, fluids, uh, tyres and that. Um, and we got down to the staging lane there and um, Glenn double checked the tyre pressures and everything like that and then we, we set off. So I do have a video of our first pass, um, so I will play that for you guys now. So the first pass went really well. Um, it was a 975 at 145 mile an hour. Um, I did pedal it in the 60 foot because for some reason we just couldn't get traction. The back tyres just weren't gripping like they should. I don't know if it's because they're weathered or just too far gone now, but um, we couldn't get traction either way for the whole day. So. Even with a pedal in the 60 foot, we still managed to pull a 975 at 145 mile an hour. And I, the funny thing is, I even blew the back window out of it. Um, I didn't realise this until halfway up the return road. One of the fire marshals pulled me up and she said, Oh, the boys are just going to get your window. And I'm like, what window? And then she said that my back window blew out. So, um, we put it down to... The chassis twisting, because it did lift the passenger's wheel, the chassis twisting has obviously popped the glass, and then once I've got it up to speed, the wind's just sort of gotten underneath it and taken it, um, which is fine. So, um, 
I got back to the to the pits, and um, this is where I learned about the 975. So I'll play that quick little video for you now. Oh my God! I did. <laughs> I even let off on the fucking 60 foot and everything because it, it was faster. faster. Yeah, I finally will faster. Alright, so I got a video, a couple of videos sent to me of the second pass. Uh, Rodney Mackin was on our crew this year. He got a video of through the staging lanes and everything like that all the way down to the run so I'll play that one for you and I'm pretty sure I got another one in the crowd somebody in the crowd sent it to me um, so I'll play that one also um, the second run was a, a 10.76 um, I can't remember the speed sorry but um, that was just no traction at all it just it wouldn't grip. I did pedal it off the 60 foot and then I got back into it and it just spun again. So once she did hook up, I pinned it, but I ended up with a 1075. So here's those two clips uh, and that. And, um, and then after that, we'll talk about the catastrophic engine failure. So the final run of the day ended up being a 10.24. Um, 
we were in the staging lanes and I turned the car off and then <clears throat> we were talking to some people and everything like that and when I jumped back in it to start her up she was cranking slowly not overly slow but you could just tell it it almost like the battery was going flat um, still no oil light to be present um, so once again I didn't think much of it I just thought it was a flat battery so she did fire up I figured I'd leave her running and uh, and we'll call it evens on her so I left it running I got suited up jumped in the car and started crawling through everything <laughs> Uh, the burnout went fine. Everything went fine. Uh, got up to the to the staging lights. Got it on the two step up to the four grand that she always does, and she took off. Wheel spin once again as usual. Pedaled it through the sixty. Uh, absolutely nailed it down the quarter. All the shifts were great. Everything was on point. Um, still no sign of an oil light. Um, and then I crossed the line. And I took my foot off the gas and put it on the brake and the ass end got swirly on me. Now, I didn't think much of this. I thought it was just weight transfer. Um, so, I was holding on, but then she got a little bit out. Like, really started getting swirly on me. Um, and then, it was really quiet. I couldn't figure out why. And I looked in the rear vision mirror and all I could see was, like, con rods and gudgeon pins and, and everything just strewing down the track um i do have them in the passenger's side there um and yeah so i instantly knew that bottom end was gone <clears throat> there's a big hole in the sump and part of the block too there's a crack all the way along the sump but yeah there, I, I will be doing episodes on on the rebuild of her um we're gonna have to rebuild the whole car now because we went over 140 mile it needs a shoot because we went quicker than our 10.5 cutoff, it needs a cage. Um, but unfortunately, Carla's rebuild won't be done until I finish the new carport. Um, so, I'll show you some of the gear. So that's part of the oil pump assembly, two gudgeon pins, they are the bottom part of the conrod, top part of the conrod, I do have some piston skirt in there and everything, so um, I'll play that last and Carla's last and final run for you, and uh, you, can, you can see what you think there, I'd like to just thank Sydney Dragway for the footage. Um, it's not my footage. I, I got this from the Sydney Dragway channel. So yeah, thanks guys. Thanks very much for that um, So watch this video and then we will talk about our future plans for her and Everything like that and we'll go from there We have seen cars improving their time so to put an extra tenth on it I've just noticed this V and Commodore down here with no windscreen. No, nah. no windscreen. Don't worry about that. Let's worry about that later we'll Talk about that in a minute Galotta gets out of there with a 187 reaction time, the better of the two, gets down the end with the win, a 1083 on a 1075 dial in 124 miles an hour. And if you just join us on the live stream, you've been here for the first time, dial in time, Rusty. It's basically you nominate a time that your car is going to run. Yep. If you run faster than that, it means you lose the race. 100%. So, so the, the idea is to get a great reaction time. Level goes, the playing field. Go as close to your dial in time as possible. So what you will see is basically one light will come down different to the other depending on your dial in time. Yeah, absolutely. Peter Villaris now in the Go Logistics. Uh, Falcon down there taking on Chris Downs in the VN Commodore. Cross the line, 1065 on a 1024. Chris Downs left a bunch on the table with the reaction time. Only a 713 on the reaction time. And a lot of smoke down there for Chris Downs going through the uh, braking area. You can see up there on the big screen. And looking at it, I think there might be a trail of something uh, it's behind. Let's definitely glistening in the sun there, isn't it? The Can we switch out, to so the other camera, uh, Bushy, our wonderful producer that we've got running the live stream here today. Switch to the other camera and this will give us a pretty good idea of what's going on. Um, this is the beauty of Sydney Dragway now. We've got uh, 12 of these cameras. Uh, 11, sorry. 11 cameras at the moment. Will be 12 very shortly. Uh, cameras all around the venue that we can pretty much get to anywhere on the racing surface uh, and the staging lanes and we can we can find it. So as you can see, that's a, that's a fairly major hemorrhage, that one, unfortunately. 
And I dare say, uh, Matty Cav, that we are going to be down for a clean-up after that one. Now, that I guess the good news, and I say good in inverted commas, is that that car didn't really start smoking until it was well into the braking area. So it's not going to be affecting the racing surface. It's just the braking area that I think we're going to have to clean up down there. Yeah, make that a little bit easier for the clean-up crew. And they've been uh, reasonably busy today. We are about an hour and a half behind schedule. So I've uh, been reasonably busy today. And we need to thank all of our volunteers and officials here at Sydney Drag. We're doing a fantastic job here for... The Grudge Kings 2021, all thanks to Tuna's Edge. Uh, we are underway at the moment with the Tarabay and Sun Street Outlaw Class, round number one. So, of course, this is a dial your own. And when we talk about that dial, and we did we touch on it. So there you have it, you can see the big trail behind her, the smoke, all the catastrophic destruction um, and everything like that. Uh, so unfortunately I just don't have the funds to throw everything at it at once, you know, I've got to get the carport done, some renovations on the house, um, I've got to get the larder finished, I've got to sort out some bugs in my truck um, and stuff like that, you know, and plus the three kids and a mortgage, you know, they all become you know they all need financing as well so I will get it done you know, slowly over time um, but probably looking about two years I'm gonna start doing you know specific things on the channel so like I've got to make a plate for the larder and and that to cancel out the emissions gear and each time I change something on this I'll make an episode of it but specifically on one thing instead of trying to cram eight things into one episode um, so I'm going to try and get a bit more into the nitty gritty of it all. So it's not the end of the racing. Um, if you've been on Facebook, you'll know that um, my best friend, crew chief and business partner, Glenn Ponting, is building a Morris. Um, he's We're putting a 202 turbo in it. So that'll be back with the Trimatic. It's quite literally just a cheap, no frills budget build. Um, it's not going to be an absolute rocket ship, let's face it. I mean, I'd like to get it down to the 10s. Um, we're hoping for a 12. Like, if, if we get a 12, we'll be absolutely chuffed. But, you know, we're probably thinking in the 13s somewhere for this thing. Consider there's no weight and everything like that. Um, I do have a 202 in the shed that I'm going to use for mock-ups to build his turbo gear. Um, some R and you know research and development. I did come up with an intercooler system for it and everything like that. Um, so there'll be episodes on that. I am going to try and get Glenn to record some of his monstrosities down there in Sydney, so I can put it up for you guys and everything. Um, but there's a lot more coming. I've got a paddock full of cars that I'm going to bring, sell, try and get running. Um, there'll be a little bit more on the truck, a little bit more on the larder. Um, there'll be more on Carla. Um, I'm going to be doing the carport, so if you guys want to see me do more bits and pieces on, on the carport and the shed, um, put that down in the comments, and I'm quite happy to do that for you guys. So, yeah, that's it so far. 
and that's the plan for seventh axis racing this year. It'll be Glenn's Morris, a few more of these cars. There'll be a few more. Will you? Will it start? Um, I'm going to try and do a few more funny DIY ones, stuff like that. They're just joke ones, nothing serious. And yeah, so that'll be the future. Well, this year of 2022's plans, and we'll see how we go. All right, so make sure you guys stay tuned. Um, and yeah, hopefully I'll get this carport done soon and we can pull Carla's engine out and have a look at it. See what the damage was and then I'm going to turn it into a coffee table. Alright, so guys, make sure you like, subscribe and share. Uh, thanks heaps for this. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if there's anything you want to see on the channel or improvements or, or anything like that, just comment it down there. I read them all. So, thanks for, thanks for supporting us and we're hoping to have another great year with you all. Look after yourselves.